All right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me to the University of Tartu. It's a great privilege to be here. My name is Matt Winslow. I have my own company based outside of Antwerp, Belgium, specializing in project finance issues. I provide independent advice to uh, companies and investment firms concerning uh, project finance issues. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, what sort of projects requires project finance? Well, the typical projects needing uh, what we call project finance, which is where a project is financed on its own, separate from the normal corporate finance that functions everyday uh, aspects of a company. This is a specific project. The oil and gas industry is the largest users of uh, project finance. For particular projects, this would be developing uh, an oil or gas field, a refinery, and other things like this. So it's a very specific, say, to develop uh, an offshore oil field, a group of companies will come together usually to fall, form a group, uh, some bringing a particular expertise, others bringing uh, financing, and then they will form a consortia and then go and try to put together the finance package for this particular project. Um, and that is usually a form of both equity, which will be cash, or a state-owned oil company may provide the rights to uh, drill or explore in a certain area as their contribution in an equity uh, fashion, as well as debt, which is generally going to banks, making a presentation about the aspects, uh, the positives, and also you have to share what would be the challenges of a project to then secure uh, bank financing or you could issue uh, corporate bonds. Uh, for that, but the project itself is self-financing based off of the expectation of its future cash flows. So once it provides, starts providing revenue in the future, this will then be used to repay uh, debt uh, holders and also reward the equity shareholders. Um, but are there any differences between project finance for oil and gas uh, in comparison with coal and nuclear projects? Oil and gas projects uh, are reasonably safe and consistent in comparison with uh, nuclear projects in particular, although in nuclear there's really no ability for the private market to provide project finance because the projects are so large and expensive, the repayment schedules are so long, and frankly the possibilities of cost overruns and project delays are so great that private companies just cannot assume that risk. So you must have very large uh, state intervention directly by a government or through government-owned uh, companies that are involved in nuclear uh, construction. For oil and gas, it can be very much done in a conventional uh, private enterprise fashion, although many times you have the involvement of state-owned uh, energy companies. And so in this sense, it's very much different these are five to ten year projects for oil and gas and the risks are fairly well set although it becomes much more challenging when in projects are in very difficult uh, areas like the Arctic also in the Caspian Sea there have been issues so the industry is being pushed to more challenging areas deep water offshore uh, Africa and then also the pre-salt uh, deposits in Brazil. So this is raising the difficulty, raising the likelihood of cost overruns and delays, which is making it a, a riskier uh, effort than in the past, but it can still be reasonably benchmarked against other similar projects so that investors and companies can have a reasonable assurance that the project will come in on time and on budget as uh, originally planned. What role do government play in the energy industry? Governments are play a much larger role in oil and gas exploration now than they ever have in the past. Uh, many, many years ago, it was largely uh, private Western-owned energy companies that were doing a lot of the exploration, a lot of the production. 
Over the years, countries have sought to have more control and also to derive more benefit for their people from their natural resources. So this created the first set really of state-owned energy companies in the Middle East and they took more tighter control of their resources and then it pushed the traditional Western energy companies to go look in other places where there were more opportunities for independent projects but as a result the easy oil in the Middle East was largely was considerably put off uh, out of reach for them because of the involvement of state-owned companies and so they've been pushed into more difficult areas the deep shore exploration off of West Africa and now increasingly in the last few years looking to the Arctic for uh, fields to develop and these are both much more challenging environments much more expensive and much more difficult to do for the Western companies so it's had a, an issue of the easy oil is already out of the control of these companies and they look for other opportunities in many cases. The U.S. is the biggest uh, example now with shale oil development of oil that is reasonably accessible with new technology where it was previously locked up and is, can be done relatively easily in a place uh, with a positive economic environment and also where people are uh, eager to have the exploration and derive the financial benefits from the production. Uh, what are the industry trends that will affect the energy industry in the future? Well, the biggest industry trends on project finance are the extreme uh, escalation in costs related to this. This is of the projects. This has caused the price of projects, cost of projects to go up considerably. Project finance now uh, is a bigger role than ever before to bring the necessary resources together for uh, in both debt holders and also uh, shareholders for the maximum uh, return and the most likely uh, way to succeed financially from a project. The globally energy consumption continues to grow with particularly strong demand in Asia as the economies driven by China uh, grow dramatically and as people's wealth increases then their consumption of energy increases. They want electrification, they want to then own cars, and so this creates a huge demand. China is the biggest uh, reason for global energy uh, prices going up, increased demand, but the other Asian economies, South Korea, uh, electricity and, and fuel consumption in Indonesia is up considerably, also Vietnam. These are societies that are growing very quickly, are very dynamic, and as a result they will be consuming much more energy than in the past. The, also the other big development is the U.S. The U.S. turning from an energy and oil importer at least to satisfy more of its own uh, energy demands, which is then the opposite of China becoming such a large energy importer. And then there are other interesting changes. Mexico is now drafting economic reforms, liberalization for their energy markets, particularly their national oil company, that will entice uh, companies to go back and do a lot of work in Mexico. There should be some very exciting work there. Uh, new markets that open up because of politics like Myanmar and their political liberalization. Now many energy companies are interested uh, there as well. So there's a lot of uh, possibilities and also the uh, new fracking technology that has the possibility to unleash uh, energy reserves that were locked up before uh, beyond just what we see in the U.S. but also obviously they're looking in Ukraine and in other areas that it could be very promising.